Organic molecules are large and complex, like this partial representation of a starch molecule we see at the bottom of the screen. The closer we look at these organic molecules, though, we notice they're not as complex as we might first think. Usually, they're going to be made of repeating subunits, like the glucose that we see in the blue dotted circle. That's all starch is, is one glucose bound to another, bound to another, bound to another. If we look just at the glucose molecule, it's still fairly complex. And if I'm going to draw a representation of a large organic molecule, it's going to be a lot easier to draw circles as opposed to complicated stick figures of chemical structures. So when I draw this circle that is one part or piece of the organic molecule, I've drawn a monomer, the individual subunits that will make up these large organic molecules. When I've put all the monomers together, I've now formed a polymer. And that's the focus of our conversation right now. Chemically, how do we go from monomers to polymers? So we have two monomers, and we want to form a chemical bond between them, specifically a covalent bond to hold them together. When I do this with two monomers, I formed a dimer. I put another one on, and another one on, and another one on, and eventually we get to a polymer, but we're just going to focus with one chemical reaction for right now. And to appreciate it, we're going to have to go a little more complex than the blue circles are. We're probably going to need to go a little more complex than the chemical stick figures as well, all the way down to representations of the individual atoms. So we can see oxygen atoms, carbon atoms, hydrogen atoms, and as we look at the sh electron shells of all these atoms, we notice they're full. All of the electrons are paired to form covalent bonds between the carbons and the oxygens and the hydrogens. There aren't any unpaired electrons. Everybody's happy. There's no need to form any covalent bonds right now. That's the hurdle we're going to have to overcome in order to form the chemical bond that holds these two monomers together in the process of forming a polymer is we already have full valent shells. To address this, we're going to take a look at these, at some of these atoms that are on the very ends of the monomers, specifically a hydrogen on our glucose on the left and an oxygen and a hydrogen on our glucose on the right. Now, it doesn't take much of a leap to realize H and H and O well, if I take those away and chemically combine them, I've made water. And that's exactly what we're going to do in the process of putting these molecules together to make a dimer and then a polymer, is remove a hydrogen from one of the two monomers and an oxygen and a hydrogen from the other, put them together and make a water. And more importantly, in that process, we leave behind an unpaired electron on each of the two monomers. You know what? We've got two unpaired electrons. We can simply move the molecules together, share the pair of electrons, and we've now formed a covalent bond between the carbon of a glucose on the right and one of the oxygens on the glucose of the left. If we take a look at what the stick figure would look like, it's more like this. This process of removing a water in order to form a covalent bond to put monomers together to make a dimer, which we could do again and again and again in the process of making a polymer, is called dehydration synthesis. If we want to do the opposite and break the bond we just formed, we put water back in the picture. One hydrogen is going to wind up on one of the molecules, the oxygen and hydrogen is going to wind up on the other, and boom we split the two apart. This process is called hydrolysis, using water, hydro, to break the two molecules apart, or lyse them, split them. So every time we take monomers and form covalent bonds to form a polymer, we're losing water molecules or dehydrating each chemical bond in dehydration synthesis. If we want to break the polymer down into individual monomers, we put the waters back in, which breaks the covalent bond we just formed, and hydrolysis splits the thing apart.